Hi, and welcome to this new series of podcasts that I'm doing here on my YouTube channel. And I basically want to talk about a specific issue and a topic that I see around me and I guess industries also see it these days. It's about, you know, what kind of things do we actually need as a security hired person in a company to stay more secure, to stay more safe within the company, not the person itself, but more like how to create a better security layer and to work with security and so on. So we're going to start at a specific area here, talking about gadgets, you know, the fun, um, it could be all stuff like, you know, the, the most talked about Flipper Zero. It can also be about, you know, different kind of other things, so the M5 stack, going to buy stuff from, you know, Marauder stuff, you know, install different kind of things. You're going to create your own, you know, Ponagachi, you know, the small Wi-Fi eating handshake device and so on. How much of that do you actually need as a security professional in a company? Now, I, I the, the answer might shock you, and I want to say none. Not need any of it, you know, because what would you do with that, you know? <laughs> How would you test the security by using a Ponagachi, right? Because it works. You know that. So that's not really a way for you to work with. Now, let's take a specific example, the Ponagachi. Now, if you don't know, know what that is, you know, the, the Ponagachi itself is just a small device you create with a Raspberry Pi. And this is a 3D printed case inside of the battery. And basically what it does is, is it's going to send the authentication signals to the Wi-Fi access point, trying to grab the four-way handshake, which is going to contain the password uh, in a hashed form, so you can do an offline brute force attack on it. And of course, eventually you will break it because it is just a offline attack, just made of time. So... Um, so why, why why wouldn't you get these kind of devices just to test it? Well, basically because you are the hired person, so you basically can mitigate your way out of it by saying, I don't need the device to try and hack myself. I need to configure the Wi-Fi access point with a strong enough password, not like the company name, one, two, three, and, and hashtag, you know, no, not, not just like that, but something long and, and, and hard to get. If you're using WPA2 or WPA encryption cipher, please be aware that those two technologies are susceptible to offline brute force attack. Now, if you're using the new one, WPA3, you are not susceptible to offline brute force attacks, which is covered in the documentation of WPA3. Without going too much into technical detail about that, I'm going to talk about that many devices, you know, especially phones and um, laptops and stuff, some of them do not support that kind of chipset required to support WPA3 software. So that is a problem. Um, and then there is this downgrade thing going on, the Wi-Fi access point. So you have to, as a security officer, make a decision about, are we, do we have money to spend to upgrade everything? Or do we can we just um, make sure that, you know, we, 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 we create a really long, difficult password, no matter when it, whether it's the WPA3 or WPA2, because we need to have a secure Wi-Fi password. You also have to think about what kind of frequency you then choose. Is it 2.4 gigahertz, is it 5 gigahertz? If you choose 5 gigahertz, it's pretty more darn hard to create a brute force attack against it because the signals are really contained inside buildings. That is why w, uh, sorry, the, the 5 gigahertz signals are faster for direct access through the medium of air. As soon as you're going through a wall or something or just glass windows, you need 2.4 gigahertz. That is a lot better for that because the wavelength is longer, where the wavelength on the 5 gigahertz is shorter, more narrow, just like that. And that's gonna, you know, be um, distorted more by just hitting small stuff like, you know, uh, window or something like that. Um, so what I'm really talking about here is 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 that you know you don't need devices, you know, you don't need any weird thing. You can do it. You you can go around and test the security by 
attacking it yourself by conducting small attacks. But let's just be honest right now. You know, it doesn't really do anything to you or to the security. You are the one implementing it. So you need to make sure that the things you implemented is strong. So what you really need to focus on is the security recommendations written by, for example, uh, NIST or the ISO standards, or you have to, to read up on other kind of standards. You just have to be logical about it. You, you have to be um, focused about it. You have to understand what you're doing. Of course, when you're hired as a security officer, it's very difficult for you to do everything. You cannot be the... <laughs> The all you know, the the hired guy that you know is is a security officer that takes care of the all plan, you know, because it's gonna be impossible. But you can be the guy saying like you, you, you are a technical guys. You need to make sure that the technical implementation is within order of the Wi-Fi, and you, 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 all technical guys, to make sure that the technical part of the website is in order, and so on. And and basically that is probably why you don't see these devices that often you can also say why not just create yourself a a a, a bad usb like i have one here i created myself you can also go through by the rubber ducky from hack5 so why do i <laughs> why do i promote these devices and say this is a great device for test security well it's um it is true it is a great thing to showcase and say uh this is how bad it can be you know if you let strangers in um they can potentially you know hook up your computer with a a bad usb and install ransomware on a computer like that and then you're probably close to game over um but this is where you're gonna turn around one more time and say, what is it you can do as a security office in the company? Well, you can look at the security and say, well, we need to, don't need our folks to focus on the, the bad USB itself. We need to focus on other things like, should people have access to USB ports on the computer? Is that actually a device that should be outside? And this is also where you're gonna talk about do people need laptops or desktops? You know, if you do laptops, it's going to be a problem because there are USB ports and laptops and still hardware and software systems do not have any sort of hardware lock or software lock that require password to interact with the USB port or the other port for that sake, which is a thing that we talked about for a long time in the security industry. Um, why not just remove the USB ports? Why not just make sure there's no laptop, everything a desktop, you, it's locked down, and the computer is locked down, the only thing you have, the mouse, keyboard, you cannot, you know, screen of course, but you cannot, um, you can have, you have no access to the computer. That would actually remove the, the, the oh, what about the bad USB thing attack. Um, so what you, what I really want to point out in this video is that you have to focus on the reverse issue if you're talking about the hacking gadgets and devices. So I basically have to focus more on, you know, how to make sure that these devices are not used in your company. If they're used, it's difficult to protect against it all the time, but you can definitely create some layered security and, 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 and different kind of security measures installed, live running software in the computer that's gonna try and lock down the attack and so on, shut down the attack it is. Um, so, getting to the end of this video, I you know it's a small podcast series that I podcast series that I decided to create and talk about different kind of things that I see as issues because I feel it brings great value to you guys to you know get a get a better and greater understanding of of how you know security officers are thinking more in the industry compared to just you know nose first and head first and just pentest all the way and there's two different kind of you know industries two different kind of job roles I'm not saying the one or another is bad but i'm just saying that you know there are there's a big difference to um be the security guy hired or being the pen tester all right so this is the end of the video it's uh, my new podcast series if any questions about it the topic just leave the comment below, you know, that's going to help me a lot. If you also would like to subscribe to my channel, because it will help me grow and eventually it will support me and make me earn a big 
more money from my channel so I can buy some new stuff like microphones and stuff like that that I actually use. I also need to get a new camera, but it's very expensive and, you know, the way it is. Anyways, I'm here for you to give you as much knowledge about cybersecurity as I can. It's going to be free. So what I only ask is for you to subscribe, click the bell, like the video, and that will really just be the thing that I need the most. So see you out there, stay safe, and do not invite strangers inside your house.